are these people? We're going to get to Indie Media Award honoree uh, Sam Husseini. Thank you. Indie Media Award. Uh, Indie Media Award. Dot com. You can get there. It's a link tree and you can find all the 70 honorees. So look at this. Russiagate was Israel Gate, which he published the other day. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, Russiagate, we know, was a lot of fun. And everybody's been talking about Russiagate lately. Um, this scum. Yeah. So this time. We're saying that, you know, he's saying that after Trump won 2016, the Obama admin finally, after years of stalling, allowed a U.N. Security Council resolution condemning Israel's building of colonial settlements, which violates the Fort Geneva Convention and always has. It's just that the U.S. Yeah. has always blocked a resolution, right? Netanyahu uh, asked the Trump transition team to lobby other countries to help Israel stop the resolution from passing. Uh, Netanyahu would sleep in Trump's son-in-law Jared Kushner's bed. Creepy. I hope Jared wasn't in there when he visited New York. Maybe he might have been. He maybe might have been. We maybe, don't know. Iva maybe Ivanka was. Who knows? Um, Kushner ordered General Michael Flynn, who would become Trump's national security advisor, for about six weeks until he had to resign for some stupid shit to contact the Russian government. Russian Let scum. me call the Russians to help. Uh-huh. On December 22nd, 2016, Flynn contacted then-Russian ambassador Sergei Kislyak, asking the Russians to delay the vote until Trump got into office and then could veto it. The mm. Russians didn't do what Kushner wanted because on December 23rd, the U.N. Security Council passes Resolution 2334 condemning Israeli settlement building with the U.S. abstaining. But going back on January 28th, 2016, just five days later, outgoing President Barack Obama imposed sanctions on Russia, ostensibly because of alleged Russian interference, quote unquote, in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Funny. Kislyak then contacted Flynn about getting the sanctions reversed. As you would, <laughs> knowing that yep. sanctions were put on Russia. That is the origin of Russiagate. Which dominated mm -hmm. U.S. political discourse for years. It was Flynn contacting because the Russians. Putin's a madman. It was Flynn contacting the Russians to do a favor for Israel. Oh. Nice. How about that? Nice. How about Great. I that? Hope they, you think they helped them build a tunnel, too? Secret they, tunnel. Now. Secret tunnel. Hey. He stole my line. <laughs> he follows up with another article and says, Trump and the plan for the ethnic cleansing of Gaza. Will the Gaza mm. genocide end the same way that Russiagate began? And he asks, is Israel bulverizing Palestinian society and stalling for time so that a Trump administration will green light a mass expulsion? Well, we've known and we've been saying here that Trump will be no better, of course, for the people of Gaza than Biden. We are screwed either way because Biden is blue Trump uh, is is blue Trump and Trump is red Biden. Either way, you're fired with the exception of what might happen in Ukraine and they may shift that money to Mexico or somewhere else. Nothing will fundamentally change, just like we were promised four years ago. So, again, this is from. Yep. Indie Media Award winning journalist Sam Husseini, who sits in DC. He is in the State Department press briefings. He is he occasionally, I believe, gets into the White House press briefings and he asks tough questions. He asked he's been making uh Matthew Miller, which is Count Smugula, really squirm lately. Love what he's doing there, mm. as well as the Department of Defense, their their guy. And uh, and there, there's another there, there's Sergei? a third one, no, not Sergey. Sergey. So <laughs> he says in my last piece, I recalled how Russia Gate was actually Israel Gate because it was Flynn doing a favor for Israel at the UN and asking Russia to do a favor 
that led to Russiagate in the first place and Flynn having to resign and them investigating Carter Page and Papadopoulos and all the crap that went down in 2017. A lot of people forget all that stuff. I kind of had to be reminded yeah. myself because so much has happened since then. Hi, Mimby. Amberberries. Right? <laughs> so... What Sam says here is that similar dynamics may be before us in terms of collusion between Netanyahu and Kushner and Trump. In late May, Israel's National Security Director, Ch Tachi uh, Hanegbi. Tachi. Not Tachi, but <laughs> Tachi Hanegbi said yep. the attack on Gaza would likely last for another seven months, meaning until the end of this year. Look, we had heard mm. from Mondo Weiss and others that they were expecting it to go into 2025. So that's actually a more conservative estimate than the ones that we've heard, amazingly enough. It seems quite possible that what's happening uh, that is, is that Israel is obliterating Palestinian society throughout Gaza, destroying hospitals, targeting schools, and forcing the Palestinians to move around Gaza over and over, including into tent cities, and then we know they're bombing those 10 cities. The latest move is Israel trying to clear Gaza City in the north. Which, yes, and there's yeah. a kill zone. And I think you guys have covered that over on INN News, Reef and Cullen, Wednesday nights, 9 o'clock. Go check yes, that out. Have. Okay. Yeah. In October 2023, the Biden administration was bankrolling tent cities in Egypt, paving the way for an ethnic cleansing campaign. Yeah, they tend to do that, yep. don't they? We talked about this. Blinken, Blinken, President Blinken, or whatever, you know, acting President Blinken, has said no forcible displacement of Palestinians from Gaza. Not now, not after the war. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. But Trump, yeah. but Trump could. Boy, that escalated quickly. But Trump could, grand, could greenlight a forcible displacement. Indeed. The recent CNN debate, Trump said Israel should finish the job. Well, speaking of finish the job, somebody tried. Well, we're not talking about that. In March, Jared, <laughs> Jared Kushner commented that Gaza's waterfront property could be very valuable, and he's been hawking it all over the United States ever since. In New Jersey, in L.A., in Toronto, we've reported on that. And, yep. of course, Trump has been able to do things no conventional U.S. president could or would, especially regarding Israel. As Sam yep. wrote in, quote, Trump is the opposable thumb of the the establishment. He had written previously. The opposable thumb. Yes. The establishment. Thumb for sure. Well, he's, he's barely a shaved ape. So, yes, it, I guess it fits. <laughs> well, although I, I know that... Uh, People say he has like no. I started blasting. Bam, bam. No, no body hair, which is embarrassing. <laughs> you know, not not very manly. Not very manly. Uh, the establishment long wanted to move the U.S. embassy, of course, to Jerusalem and recognize Israel's annexation of the Golan Heights. It seemed an untenable thing for a president to do until Donnie Tiny Hands, um, and then of course he did move. At Miriam Adelson or and Sheldon Adelson's demand, um, he moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem okay. while everybody screamed. He moved the embassy. He wasn't just dip ducking and diving. He might have he might have done a little dip ducking and diving. Uh, he's te he's not Kevlar Don. He's Teflon Don. Come on, let's call it for what he is. Uh, hey, Ricket, watch them ricochets, man. Um, <laughs> So, have fun with that. Bonans, Annie, what's up, bro? Um, man, this is this. Well, yes. Yeah, so he he annexed that, and then the Golan Heights, which Netanyahu literally named the Trump Heights because he let him do it. <laughs> don't you remember? Yeah. Don't you remember? Don't you remember? Yes, they ma look at how they massacred my boy. I mean, <laughs> the Golan Heights. Yeah. They stole it from Syria, gave it to Israel, and then named it the Trump Heights. Which is exactly what Trump loves to do. Stick his name on something that he didn't earn. You can do it, baby. 
Financial Times reported in October that Israel's Netanyahu lobbied EU to pressure Egypt into accepting Gaza refugees. We also reported that multiple times and that the Israel in initial plan or their final quote unquote solution is to drive anyone who's yeah. left directly into Rainmark. this mi this mile and a half area that Egypt has been building a wall, by the way, a mile and a half in. We we talked about that several weeks <laughs> yeah. ago, right? In, in anticipation that at some point Israel is going to drive everybody else out through the Rafa gate and Egypt's going to have to accept them in except in exchange for um, their forgiving of major, what is it, IMF or World Bank loans? A couple of billion dollars, One if I them. remember correctly. All right. So, yes. Don't be rude. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Hambo. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm being rude. But Financial Times reported in October that, you know, Netanyahu lobbied the EU to pressure them uh, – into accepting them, uh, Egypt into accepting refugees. But recently, Egypt has gotten billions from the IMF and the UAE. That's interesting. Okay. Who's got big connections to the UAE and Dubai? I believe that might be Trump. Egypt is now ruled by you Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, who destroyed movements toward reform following the Arab uprisings of 2011. And Egypt has long been criticized as complicit and duplicitous regarding Israel's siege against Gaza. There were even questions as to whether they warned the Israelis in ahead of time that they knew something was coming. I don't know if that checked out or not. I know that there was a lot of talk about it. People are saying. There's been back and forth on that. People are saying. Oh. All right. Thus, Israel is pulverizing the Palestinians in Gaza to the point that with Trump's likely election in November... They can start their full-fledged ethnic cleansing campaign. Can they start their full-fledged ethnic cleansing campaign then? Will they try to buy off Egypt, at least as a departure point for a mass expulsion? Ha! As if I didn't just say that. Well, yeah. it's possible that the transition period in particular might be when Israel would plan to execute an expulsion. In 2009, after Obama won the election and before taking office, Israel launched Operation Cast Lead, which killed, of course, over 1,300 Palestinians in 22 days. Thanks, Obama. Yeah. Thanks, Obama. We're all getting squeezed, everyone. So if there's any way that you're able to, we know it's tough out there for everyone. A couple of bucks. Again, Sarah was was really generous, and, and she was able to help us out with, with, with some money this weekend. Um, and we're going to get, we're trying to get Jesse a new computer. We had a part blow on Reef's machine. I had a power cable thing blow on my machine. You know, this is the regular stuff that we deal with on a regular, uh, on a daily basis, just in order to be able to do this stuff. So anything that anybody can do to help, certainly it it's appreciated and, and necessary because we're, we're not getting sponsor money and we're not getting advertiser dollars. And you guys are the only people that, that we depend on for any kind of, any kind of funding and any kind of, of, uh, support. So we deeply appreciate it. Um,